Alright, so, hello everybody, it's Dean Spillabeam back on your screen, and I've got myself a PNG tuber setup thing. Now, honestly, I just kind of wanted to go over how I did it, because uh, I just think it's kind of interesting. So, we're going to start off with going over to Minecraft. Now, main thing that I did here, I've got myself this gigantic glowstone room that is green. It is entirely green. Reason being, it uses a bunch of the uh, this huge concrete green what, what, what even kind of color is this lime green colored concrete that makes let's see if i can find it a bunch of these maps that is using solid green now how that is actually useful if we go over to the actual uh, green room over here you might notice that it is very green well that is because we can look at my character Oh, and uh, I actually drew this one myself. I, I'm very proud of this. I drew it like years ago. But anyways, we got uh, we got our character up and running. Everything's green, and all we can all we got to do is just zoom in really closely, and we can take a screenshot after that if we really want to. But that's not good enough. So what we're actually going to do is use the replay mod. That's what I at least use here. You could also use some kind of third camera movement if you want to get a better picture of your character in a green screen area. But in my case, I use a replay recording. So I kind of walk around a little bit. I don't even have to be in third person that much. I just have to be walking around, do any kind of movements. All right, that's good enough just to show this off. There's uh, definitely different methods to actually get what I'm actually trying to do here, but for the moment, I'm just going to show this off. Uh, test show is what I will be calling it. But, let's see, where am I? Over there? Make sure that it's all set. So. Now that we have at least a third person camera looking at everything, we can get around, get like the perfect shot. It may or may not be perfect, and I'm not gonna take I'm not really gonna take any photos here. But the idea is to find some uh, side of your character, Minecraft character, to get exactly what you want. I don't feel like taking a picture at the moment, because oh my gosh, I'm spinning. <laughs> okay, so basically. Let me swap some stuff over over to Fire Alpaca. This is the photo editing software that I use in order to actually make everything. So for this case, we've got, uh, let's say this image right here. This is my actual sitting image. Now, as you might see, the face itself isn't very interesting. That's because it literally isn't reason is I do some modifications and I end up with something like this where we actually have like pupils and eyes and such that is because they are layered <laughs> now that's uh, not like perfectly layered as you might have noticed with the eyes there's like a little blop there that doesn't matter no one's going to see that but uh, ideally <laughs> you ever see Nico without hair <laughs> anyways so with all of that, I got a bunch of different layers that all culminate in the actual character. I, uh, I split off the head as like a base layer, used a bunch of used a bunch of things here to get specific pixels out. Now for most cases, probably having a one tolerance in the top left, in order to get like very specific pixel stuff. Eventually getting all of the head and hair, and then I can actually move that around and have that as a separate layer. Now, of course, uh, if I do that, if I do that, the eyes will be kind of weird. So what I ended up having to do was completely get everything on their own area, make sure I get all that done. So like with the eyes, seeing as that that was its own layer, I had to actually color that in. Same with the hat. I kind of had to color in some of the empty space in order to actually get all of that together. Same with even the pupils being like its own layer as well. Now what, uh, what culminates in this is pretty much exactly what you're looking at, which is, it is pretty nice. So how exactly did I get to where I have uh, like the PNG tuber, I can actually look around that kind of thing. Well, we're gonna use this other program 
That's called Vado, which is kind of fun. <laughs> so how how Vado works is you have a bunch of different modes that you can swap between. So for my instance, we got uh, about six of them. Each of these modes I can swap between at will, mostly because I have a key binding for all of them. So for Let's see. So for this image that you're looking at right now, it's on F9. Now, you might notice on most keyboards, F9, F19 is not on most keyboards, and that's kind of true. But uh, uh, what I ended up doing, I have this uh, mouse that has like 12 buttons on it, and they're all programmable as well, and that's using... Actually, what was it? What was it? A Corsair mouse that has 12 buttons on it. I don't have an image just to show that off. But using a program called IQ, it uh, allows me to program all of the buttons. So in this case, I have, like, for this one is F19. I just realized I can't actually see that. Hold on. Okay, I got rid of the background. Fun. Anyway, so for this one, it's F19. You can see that. Uh, and I swap between them, and it goes to the different function buttons. Now, theoretically, I could also add shift or control into this and have, like, a different button. So I could say control F19, and that will give me this face. So I could press F19 and it doesn't work, or control F19 and that works. I'm just going to set that back to F19. So I could, in the future, add, like several layers of character faces in order to get this to work better which uh, I'm not going to entirely show off I just wanted to show what I got at the moment so in terms of actually getting let me see here okay in terms of actually getting something like useful well, let me swap this around I'm literally doing this live I actually kind of want to try this out more so in order to get a face to be rigged up to what we got. We need four different images. One of them is one for the mouth open. So in this case, I have a mouth open layer that is connected to the mouth, so I can move that around. <laughs> I, I want to get like some goofy images at some point just to have like different faces. But let's say, I don't know, we have the mouth like way over here. Maybe it's a, like, a slightly confusing face. Okay. Let's kind of move the brow to be very... Actually, that could probably work to just move all that around, move the pupils to be, like, looking in a specific area. Now, you might also notice that the extra eye part up there is kind of visible. Ideally, I kind of want to change it so that it's not that noticeable. So we'll go over to the eye layer. It has its own mask. In this case, I can just mask that out, which I can just get back in and out as I see fit. And I have that with like the pupils as well and some other parts just to get uh, random things out of the way. So now uh, this is probably a really good confusion face. I might adjust the brows very slightly just to be there. Now I could have these at an angle but with the effect that I want to get, I want to have as, as much pixelation as possible for this. So it might not look the best, because it's just maybe too jagged, but I still want to use it. So, just to make it look a little bit nicer, I will take an eraser and kind of smooth it out a bit, although I don't want to use anti-aliasing, so I might turn that off. So try to smooth that out, or is it just going to look like that forever? I think at that angle, it's going to look like that forever. And I could try to make it any better. Ooh, I could take out these stray pixels that I don't want. Now, it might not seem like that much, but with those stray pixels, it adds, like, unnecessary blotches to it. It's kind of hard to see at, like, a distance, but... Just to try and smooth that out. I might even smooth that out just a little bit. And kind of leave it at there. You know what? This is actually a good face. I might actually add that into my repertoire. <laughs> so in this case, we will save that. I don't have... 
Actually, can I add in the save uh, saving file function? Do I want to? Actually, no, I don't want to show my file explorer. That might be a bad idea. But in this case, uh, if what you can't see is I'm saving it to my faces folder. I am naming it. What should I name it? This is going to... So in this situation, I kind of uh, file things very specifically. Actually, I think I could just pull up a notepad just to show what I'm typing. Yeah, there we go. So, in this case, I'm typing it as mnv2.pose13, which the uh, whole reason why I even have that, I have mn as like Minecraft Nico version 2, because this is like a version 2 pose that, I, or character thing that I'm doing. Pose 13 is the poses that I have. Yes, I have like, th I have 15 different poses that I want to work with, of which will take me time to do. So, to uh, give an idea of what this actually is, I give it a dash. I have like a specific, uh, let's say for this case, I just call it confuse as like a confusion thing. Now, I'll also mention that since I have this, at, actually, I'm just going to save it really quick. Dot confuse. I also have this as the open variant. So I'll leave an O there to signify that it is the open mouth variant. I'll save that. This will save it independent, uh, or because uh, I saved it as a PNG, it saves it independent of the actual work file. I have two main work files, that being the work file that we're on right now. And that is what I call the base work. And then I also have the base file that is, well, the base uh, thing that I adjust. So if ever I need to make any adjustments, say like with this image right here, I can actually kind of work on that. Or, uh, work on it without affecting the base image and its base. the base image is as a backup. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, so now we have our confusled face or rage face or something i don't know i might actually use this in a different way so we have the open mouth variant now we just need the closed mouth variant and the blink one or the blink stuff so i might have the let's see i might have the mouth stuff slightly adjusted a little bit just to add a little bit of difference to uh, whenever I do anything specifically, so let's see, I think I'll do that. Now, uh, it's a little jagged here as well, so this is on a separate PNG. It's from my base file, so I think I can actually do some nice, fine adjustments. If I had the right color, there we go. I actually kind of like that. I might take a couple pixels off here just to kind of smooth it out a bit. Kind of move the brows just to make the end product be a little bit different, not like totally, but just enough to notice that there has been a change in movement. Okay, we'll keep that as the closed variant, of which uh, of which will be saved as a C just to signify that's a closed variant. This is, again, how I'm doing it. You can do it however you want if you feel like it. What? Why is the notepad looking weird? What? Does it actually register when it's off screen? Oh, that's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay. So, this this one is saved as Confuse Close. Okay, there we go. That's pretty cool. Now for the fun part, is actually getting things to blink. And I probably should have gotten a blink thing when I did the open mouth variant, but I missed that, so we'll get that on our way back. So, how I do uh, like a blinking animation is that I hide the eyes, still having the pupils, control the brows, move it down a little bit. I might move the right brow down just a little bit more, even 
kind of turn it back, it gets back to a really weird jagged edge. So I got to be a little careful with how I end up with this. But I'll do that for the moment. I'll do a quick smoothening. Please erase. No, it doesn't erase. Okay. Just a quick smoothening of everything. Take out some stray pixels. Now, of course, if you had anti-aliasing on this, which just kind of smooths it out, it's not going to be as bad. But uh, to get the uh, feel that I want, I kind of want to get rid of as much smoothing as possible because I want to go for like a Minecrafty image. So anything blocky or pixelated is pretty much a go. Everything else isn't. Okay, I think I'll make this brow just a little bit fatter, actually, just to kind of give it a little bit more depth because I think I just took out a little too much of it. <clears throat> kind of smooth that in, in between area. Do I think that's good? Maybe. How does it look without the pixels or the pupils? It looks okay. I think I'll go with that, so... We'll save that as a close blink. Are you sure? Yeah. And then finally, a close open. Which for this case, since I have the mouth at a different angle, which was about there, I think, so I'm going to have to redo a few things. Let's see, we'll go to the mouth, add. I want to add or remove. I think we'll add to it. There we go, but I do think that actually made the mouth a little bit fatter, so I'll have to move that back a bit. I can probably, actually, let me see. I did save that as like an actual image, so let me go find the face that I just made and see what I actually got it to look like. So confuse. Oh, here we go. So I imported that back in. Got that on top. So this is kind of where the difference is. Let's see, I will kind of make that a little easier to work with. Move the mouth around just a tad. Trying to get like a similar feel. We'll go with that. It's not perfect, but I think that'll be fine. How does that look normally? Mmm. No, it's not fine. We'll just obscure it just a little. So... We'll just kind of etch back the mouth a bit. Try to fill in some of that, I think. Mm. You know, I, I think we'll just go for that with that for now. I got to get a move on. So we'll just say that this is our clo uh, our open blink variant. Save that. Yeah. Now something as an extra that I do sometimes when it comes to the, when it comes to these images. Uh, they're, they're not going to be like exactly at the correct angle that I want. Say like, uh, like I, I have a couple of these just kind of nudging slightly over to the left or slightly over to the right. So in order to do that before I put it through the dough is I bring out the images that I actually worked on. 
Sorry for the blinding light. I'm going to get that down. I need to fix that at some point. But basically, we look at this. I'm going to assume I'm going to be looking slightly down. So I find a pixel as a reference, and I just kind of move down slightly, maybe about here. This is just going to be me looking at something, being like, what? What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> so since I move that down a bit, if I save it... It'll override the currently existing image, and now I can actually have that kind of anywhere. But now I'm going to do it with the other ones. So I'm going to bring in Confuse Close. Now you might notice it's slightly moving, very slightly, very slightly, but it's notable. So I find my reference pixel, this tiny little bugger. I move it around a bit until it matches up with the two or the uh, first layer. In this case, it lines up fairly perfectly. Now the mouth is kind of edged a little bit, so I might do some adjustments later on whenever I feel like it. For the moment, I'm just trying to get this done as a demonstration. So we'll leave that there. Now we got to do it with the other ones. So new layer. Just that very slightly over. Okay, get rid of the other layers while I save this. Actually, wait, did I, hold on, did I? Ah, just a second. Okay, so this layer is confused open. Save that as PNG. Already exists, what are you sure? Yes. This one is Confuse Close. Already exists, are you sure? Yes. This one is Close Blink. There we go. And then last one is Open blink, so we'll get that one really quick. Open blink. Adjust it to be the same spots. There we go. Let's see. Close blink. Wait, did I already do that one? No, wait. Hold up. Confuse open is this one. Oops. Need to double check that. Confuse open. You sure? Yes. Okay, so this one's confuse close. Okay, I think that's done. Just kind of double checking over on a couple things. Hmm. Actually, it's not at the right angles. Actually, I wonder how that's going to look like. Let's just go over to Vado really quick just to see what that looks like. So, in this case, I did something slightly wrong, and not all of them are actually adjusted to the same area. But whatever, this might actually be a cool thing to show off. But uh, we're going to add in a new pose. This one's going to be some pose 13, 4. We'll just call it... Confuse. And now we need to uh, give it some imagery. So I'm going to go implement some stuff. So I need a. I, uh, I need a open eyed close. That's this one. <laughs> open variants. And then I need to add in the blinks. <laughs> Why does this thing so confusing? <laughs> so anyways, that's how you actually adjust this. Now, in order to actually access that face, I need to do some shortcuts. So in this case, what I mentioned earlier, Shift-19 is what I'm going for. Does that not work? F19, yeah. Oh, I, I I set the one that I'm currently on is F9, uh, Shift F19. I need to go 
to my confuse specifically and said that. Ah, you might notice the blink is uh, slightly jarring. It's kind of, uh, kind of hard to notice, but I notice it and I'm a little bugged by that. So, in order to fix that, can we see these being different? Ah, these are kind of different. So I'm just going to adjust that. Oh, wait, I'm not actually looking at it. There we go. I got I want to get used to actually looking at some of this. This is confusing. But, uh, yeah, gosh. I want to actually get used to being able to record something like this without having to do too much editing, just as, like, a different style. But, uh, so we're going to make sure that's lined up. Pretty sure that's pixel perfect at this point. So that is lined up with this now. So I'm going to make sure all layers are gone. Save this one as close blink. Are you sure? Yes. I'm gonna go check out these other ones as well. Ooh, it's also now. Hmm. How did I slightly get that wrong? Hmm. But yeah, th this is kind of why I want to add a bunch of these faces in, just to actually add more emotions, just so I can be very confused whenever I feel like it, or there's some variation of it. Okay, so this one's done. I'm gonna make sure that one's saved correctly. So this one is a open blink. Yes. Going down here to this one, and it seems that this image is actually fine, so I don't have to do any more adjustments there. Now, that doesn't actually update on Vado quite yet, so I'm going to have to actually update that here. So I think that's with the blink imagery. So we're going to go to this face. I don't like this face very much. I'm just going to redo the faces. This one is blink close that one blink open open mouth and lastly confuse there we go I have just suddenly got a new face that I can work with it's kind of nice did that peak for a minute? whatever so whenever I feel like I'm very confused on something I can just be very confused yeah, uh, th this actually can be very useful later on. Anyways, that is kind of how I got this PNG avatar to actually work. I'm going to add more faces later on, but uh, hopefully this video at least showed you how to make your own PNG tuber thing. It doesn't even have to be like how I do my Minecraft PNG tuber. It could just be that you have a bunch of different images and you have to work on some faces. This is just how I made it, and I thought it was interesting and I wanted to show it off. So, I think that's actually kind of neat. I also want to, in the future, kind of work on using OBS as a way to just record everything like uh, without having to use editing software, just to kind of save on time. Even though this is going to be about a 30-minute thing, I think it was kind of useful. I could have probably done something faster. I just want to get better and have like more faces to swap between. Hmm, I wonder what I can do with this information. <laughs> All right. I think that's just going to end the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it at least some amount. And you all have a good night.